Today we're starting 5.5, and this is about graphs of proportional relationships. This word proportional, it kind of means balanced, and today we're going to talk about that through graphing. I am hoping that this looks familiar to you about how to graph some points on a coordinate plane, okay? So there's two things I want to teach you. There's an X and a Y axis. Do you guys remember which one goes from left to right? The X. So I want you to pull out your red pen and let's go ahead and label this. That is the X axis because it goes left and right. And you always want to label the X first, okay? So you're going to go left and right first. The up and down one, what one is that called? Y. y. So go ahead and write that with your red pen. Then there's another thing I want to teach you and it's this word called origin. The origin is basically the beginning of something. For us, when I have an origin, it's going to look like this, zero, zero. Okay, so that is the point at which you will start plotting every single point. It is the origin. This right here is where the origin is at. Okay, it's that zero, zero. It's where the X and the Y axis is meet. Okay. All right, so whenever you are plotting points, you have to understand what the lines mean. Okay, so if I said this right here was the origin, that's zero, zero. What number is one bigger than zero? One, okay? So we are going, think of it like a number line, okay? This right here is number one. This is two, three, four, and five. Please notice I am labeling the line. I am not labeling the box. Do you see the difference? So I want you guys to go ahead and take your pencil out and label the lines, not the box. If I am going backwards, that's a negative direction. Think of it like a number line. What number comes right before zero on a number line? One. Not one, but oh, before negative, one. negative one. What would the next one be? Negative two. Negative two. Once again, please make sure you are labeling the line, not the box. All right, now if I am going up, do you guys think that's positive or negative? It is positive, so the first one is going to be a 1. Once again, notice I am labeling the line, not the box. Let's go ahead and label it all the way up. We'll go up to a 6. And going down, the very first line is going to be negative 1 and go all the way down through negative 6. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, you can see over here, this means x and y, okay? X will always be that first number. Now repeat after me, left and right, left and right. then up and, down. up and down. Say it one more time, left and right, left and right. then up and, down. up and down. All right, so what's gonna happen here is we are going to start every time right here, I'm starting at the zero, zero, okay? Now, I say I've gotta go left and right. If I'm going negative five, which direction am I going? To the left, okay, because I've got to go left and right first. So if I start at the origin, I am coming over here. You don't need to write this down yet, but I am going to be coming over here from that point going over to the negative 5. Now if you look, it says not just negative 5, but also uh, 6. I already went left and right, so now I have to go up or down. Which way is positive 6? Up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go all the way up here to 6. Now, you're not normally going to draw lines to get there, but that was just to kind of show you. So now all you're going to do is just plot that point at negative 5 and 6. And then if you noticed right over here, it said that we are calling that point A. So I want you just to go ahead and take your pencil and write down that is point A. For anybody who would like to come to the board to try to plot point B. All right, let me have Taylor come on up. When he comes up here, guys, where should he always start? Repeat after me. The origin. The origin. Okay. Nope, you don't need a marker. Just go ahead and use your finger, okay? So I want you to put your finger on zero, zero, okay? Now, guys, if you look over here on point B, it says to go where first? Negative two. Negative two. Remember, you do left and right first, so go ahead and go over to negative two. Good job. He went to the left, and now go to positive four. Excellent. Okay, so he went back to and up four. And Taylor, what will I label that as? Uh, wait, A and B. Okay, B. that is B. Very good job. Who wants to come up to plot C for me? Let me have William come on up. Okay, guys, where should he start every time? Zero. Zero, zero at the origin. Okay, now you can see we are going five and three. Which direction is the five? Uh. Good job. He went to the right because you have to go left and right first and then up to three. And what will I label that as? C. C is correct. Who would like to do the next one? 
All right, let me have Brody come on up. Okay, next one. Point D says zero and two. This is probably the hardest one we have. What point do you have to do first? Zero. Zero, okay. So he's at the origin. Now left and right, where will he go, class? Uh, right. It right. says zero. Nope. He stays right there. He's not going to move left or right, okay? So he stays at the zero. Now you have to go two for your Y, okay? If he does this, is that correct? No. No, because you went to the right. Remember what I said, zero, zero? You are not going to move anywhere. So if I start right here and then I say go zero left and right, you don't go anywhere. Oh. Then I say go up or down two, where do you end up? Oh. Up two. Show me where it's at. Excellent. Okay, so that is how you would plot that. And then we're going to go ahead and put point D. Who would like to do the final one for me? Ayana, come on up. Every time she's going to start at the origin, so go ahead and put your finger on zero, zero. Left and right first, so you're going to go two. Good job, she went to the right two, and then up and down, negative six. And then she went down. Excellent work. And we're going to label that point E. Does that make sense how to label points on the coordinate plane? Yes. Okay, how many of you would say this is coming back and it's like a review to you? You've learned that last year. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to use this concept and idea today during our math lesson. I want you to go ahead and write down this term for me. Use your red pen and pull that out. This is the constant of proportionality. Everyone say proportionality. proportionality. Okay, very good. And I want you to go ahead and label that in. All right, so the main thing that I want you to understand is that K right there stands for unit rate. Do you guys remember unit rate? We had that on our tests yesterday. A unit rate always has a denominator of one, okay? So we're going to use that here in just a little bit. And the graph of this line will always pass through the origin. What points are my origin? Zero, comma, zero. Zero, zero, okay? So we will use that here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at this first one. This says, to tell whether or not X and Y are proportional, explain your reasoning. If I'm plotting points on a graph, the way that I can tell if they are proportional or not is if it passes through the origin or if it passes through the point zero, zero. So let's go ahead right now. We're just going to go ahead and look at what these points are. If you see, that's an X and Y. So I want you to go ahead and just write it like this, one and negative two. That's what it would normally look like whenever we're plotting points. The next one, what points do I have there? Two, two. two and zero. What are the next ones? Um, three, and two. three and two. And the final ones? Four and four. four and four. Before we can get started, we are gonna go ahead and label our graph. Remember, going to the right is positives, and as I told you before, please label the lines, do not label the boxes. Going to the left is always going to be your negative numbers, just like whenever you have um, a number line, okay? Going up, is that positive or negative? Positive. Okay, going up, it's going to be positive. And going down is? Negative. negative. Now, what a lot of people are starting to label that as line one. Would that be correct, what I just did? What? The way I labeled line one. No. Why not? Why not? Do you see this? I skipped a whole line right there. So you've got to be careful because I'm seeing a lot of people do that. Label the very first line as line one. Okay, and now all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plot those points just like we did before. Everybody put your finger on the origin. If I have to go over one, which direction am I going for the x-axis? Nope. Repeat after me. Left and right first. Everybody, left and right first. Left and right first. Then go up and down. Everybody say that one more time. Left and right first. Then go up and down. All right, so here we go. I have to go to X first, which is a one. Which direction is that? Go to the right one. And then I have to go to negative two. Which way is that? Down two. Okay, so to the right one and down to plot your point. Now, does this tell me to label it as A, B, C, or D? No. No, so I'm not going to, okay? Let's go to the next one. Two and zero. Left and right first, so which direction do I go? Right. To the right because it's positive, and then up and down. Where do I go now? Don't go anywhere. You don't go anywhere. Why not? Because it's a zero. Because it's a zero, okay? Just put that dot there. Let's go to the next one. Three and two. Left and right first, so which direction am I going? To the right, three, and then up two. and then up two. Very good. 
Next one, four and four. Where do I go first? Uh, go to the right and then up four. Okay, so now all you're going to do for this one is you're going to go ahead and basically connect the dots. Okay, so I've connected my dots right there. If you want, you can use a piece of paper to make sure your line is straight. Even tonight on your homework. Here's one thing that I want to teach you and help you to understand. This means this line could have way more points that keep going. Do you see like that? This line could keep going. Will that line, if I keep extending it up and down, will it ever cross through the origin? No. no. Notice, here's the origin, guys, right? I'm never going to hit that. So when it asks me in my instructions, tell whether or not y are proportional, the answer is no, and it says to explain our reasoning, and here's why. It doesn't pass through the origin, and that helps you to understand if something is proportional or not. Okay, so once again, just be reminded, if that line kept extending, would it ever hit the origin? The answer is no, and that's why it's not proportional, because it doesn't pass, and it will never pass through the origin. For problem B, we're going to go ahead and do another example just like that. Looking at this, let's make our points look like normal, okay? With the parentheses, I've got a negative 1, then a negative 2. What's the next one going to be? Zero, zero. zero and zero. What's the last one? One and two, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and label the graph on your own and try to do those three points. When you're finished, check with your partner to see if they got the same answer as you. So if I look at the points over here that I have to plot, I can see it never gets smaller than negative two and it never gets bigger than positive two. So I really don't have to label all the way up to a six or a seven. Notice that I only labeled up to a three on all of my points, okay? So that's up to you if you wanna keep labeling them far out or if you just wanna do it around the points that you're gonna to have to plot, that's fine too. Okay, as I just walked around, some of your graphs look like weird shapes. Let that be a clue to you. If it looks like a funny or weird line, something might have gone wrong, okay? So my first one right here, I need to label negative one, negative two. I go to the left negative one, and I go down negative two. How many of you would say your point looks like that? Next one, zero, zero, that's my origin. Hopefully that should be pretty simple. The next one, one and two, go to the right one, and then go up two. After I do that, I'm gonna connect the lines. What do you guys think, yes or no, is yes. that proportional? Yes. yes, why? Because it goes all over the origin. It passes through the origin, and any time it passes through the origin, then that is proportional. How many of you, yours looks just like that? If it doesn't, does anyone have a question for me about why yours didn't look right? Here's what number three says. The graph shows the speed of a subway car. Find the speed in miles per minute. I want us just to kind of pull some information off of this graph to see what we can learn about it just by looking at the graph. Do you guys remember which way is the x-axis, left and right or up and down? Left and right. Okay, left and right. So you can see down here, this is my x-axis, okay? What is the x-axis, if you look down here, what is it labeling? The time, and what are my units for the time? Minutes. Okay, so time per minutes, all right? Talk about the Y. What is the Y labeling? Up and, down. Up and down, or the distance that it's traveling in miles. So I want to see if you guys can discover just by looking at this. It says find the speed in miles per minute. If something says per minute, that means per one minute. I want you to look at this graph right here and see if you can find that answer just by looking at the graph without doing any work. All right, guys, once again, it says find the speed in miles per one minute. If you look down here, do you see that that's my minutes? Okay. Where's the one at for my X's? The dot, the first dot. The first dot? Look, do you see this one right here, guys? Yeah. Okay, so let's just go up to the one. If I go up to that one, it is proportionate to what? One half. one half. So when it asks me find the speed in miles per minute, guess what the answer is? One half, one half mile per one minute. All right, this is how I taught you. Remember unit rate? 
how you always have to have a denominator of one. So you could write it like that, or you could write just the words a half a mile per minute. But just by looking at that graph, we can discover that that is a half a mile per minute. All right, so listen, for that, we can tell that that's the answer. Does everyone understand that that's what it would be according to this graph, okay? Looking at that graph, guys, if it was two minutes, how much distance would they travel? Uh, one mile, one mile. Look right here. If I go to this, this is my two minutes, and I go all the way up, it's proportionate to one mile. And does that make sense? Yes. If they're going a half a mile for one minute, they would go a whole mile in two minutes, okay? Now, we're gonna use that formula that I had just taught you just a couple minutes ago. Um, let me bump back to it real quick. Notice this, the constant of proportionality. For our final problem today, we're gonna use this. But I want you to remember, this K right here, what does that stand for, class? The unit rate. The unit rate. So what we just did, that was per minute, per one minute, which is our unit rate. One. Now we're gonna use that formula that I just showed you to help us with this problem. It says that the graph here shows the area Y in square feet that a robotic vacuum cleans in X minutes. How many of you guys have a Roomba or one of those vacuums that kind of vacuums the room by itself? How many of you know what a Roomba looks like? Okay, hands are down. What we're trying to do is find the area cleaned in 10 minutes. Remember here, my minutes are here in the X axis. How many minutes does my graph go up to? 32. How many minutes? It only goes up to three minutes. How many minutes am I trying to find? Ten. Ten. So listen, if I wanted to extend this out and go four, five, six, seven, eight, and keep going all the way until I get to ten, okay, then my graph is going to keep going up here and it's going to go off the charts. Does that make sense? So by the graph, this is not going to make sense for me to use the graph to find my answer. So I've got to use that formula. What was the original formula that we just had? Read it to me, guys. No, 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 no. What's the formula that I just showed you that you wrote in your red pen on your notes? Y equals... KX. KX. Once again, remind me, what does the K stand for? Unit rate. The unit rate. The unit rate has to have a denominator of... One, one. Of one. So let's look here to find the unit rate. Do we know how many square feet it is when it's at one minute? What is it? Ten. Look right here. I'm going up to one minute. How many square feet is that, guys? Sixteen. So guess what? That sixteen right there, because it's the unit rate per one, I am going to now plug in sixteen for my K. Looking at this, once again, one minute, it covers 16 square feet. Help me with this, guys. Two minutes covers how many square feet? 32. Now, my goal, I want to know how many square feet does it cover in 10 minutes? Guys, which one means minutes, my X or my Y? The X. Look down here. The X right here means minutes. So guess what number I'm going to plug in for my X? 10. Why am I plugging that in there? because it asked me how much area did it clean in 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna take this, 16 is my unit rate, and I'm gonna plug in a 10. Should I just stick the 10 right here like that? You've got to multiply it, because this right here means 16 times x, so now this means 16 times 10. Guys, what is 16 times 10? 160. Now look, this is coming up with my y. What units are my y? Square feet. square feet. So the correct answer is 160 square feet. Once again, if I go back to my original question where it says find the area cleaned in 10 minutes, I cleaned 160 square feet in 10 minutes. So you are able to use this right here, the constant of proportionality, to help you find that, okay? You guys did a great job listening today. Now I want you to go ahead and see tonight's homework is just eight problems um, over section 5.5. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time right now to go ahead and work on this here in class today.